Do you feel like when you're soloing, you're playing too much of the same thing all the time, especially when you're playing in minor pentatonic? For some reason, minor pentatonic is the first scale shape that we all tend to learn as guitar players. And I guess because it's in so much of blues and classic rock, and that's where a lot of the guitar bass music is coming from. But what we often are not taught is we're not taught how to target certain notes for certain chords. It's a mystery to me why we don't teach that enough, or it's a mystery to me why maybe some students kind of ignore it, right? Because there is actually a very easy way to use target notes in your solos. There's a hard way, but there's an easy way. And as I always say, if there's an easy th way to do something and it sounds good, we should definitely do it. That's the third, right? Let's go back to root. Fifth. Sounds like we're not done, right? Third. Step one is pretty basic, and a lot of you might already do this, but it's important that when we're playing that we focus on the roots. And a lot of our licks should end on the roots because when we end on the roots, it sounds finished. It's like putting a period or a comma at the end of the sentence. It also helps it to feel more connected to the chords underneath because you are listening to the chords underneath when you jam, aren't you? Mm-hmm, I'm sure you are. Well, if you're not, this video is also gonna help you to do that because when we listen to the chords underneath, we can highlight important notes from each of those chords and it gives us a kind of a new set of notes to choose from, but also a whole bunch of new ideas and ways to make our even simple licks sound more interesting because we're choosing notes that belong in the chord at that very moment. And so when we play those notes, they jump up, they, they resolve or they stand out depending on which one you're hitting and they just sound so much better. They will prevent you from noodling, right? First, the easy part, many of you might know how to do this and that is that in our minor pentatonic shape, we have root at the bottom. I mean, of course you know that. That's probably how you found the shape in the first place, right? And then we have a root here. So if we're playing, you know, the overused lick that I talked about in my Stop Playing This Lick video, that is the root. And you'll notice that in that video, I go back to the root a lot, even when I'm playing the dreaded Stop Playing This Lick uh, note or lick. When we finish on that root, it says, yeah, that lick is done, right? We don't always want to finish on that root because we don't want all our licks to sound like we have a final pause at the end of everything. When people speak that way and they put, uh, you know, too much pause and when they're speaking, it just sounds kind of dull, right? We want to have some more flow. So now let's make it interesting by targeting a different note of the chord. This is where you could say it gets a little more complicated, but remember, it's actually very easy if you use this method that I'm gonna show you. And the method is, rather than thinking about, well, inside an A chord, we have a root, a minor third, and a fifth, and therefore that's A, C, and E, and then having to know precisely where an A and a C and an E are on the guitar, you might know how to do that, and if you do, that's cool, good for you. But I actually don't always use that knowledge to target notes. The knowledge I use is I think about chord shapes and interval shapes. Because when I think about the chord shape, I can see where the notes are, the notes that I want. And in this case, if we're in our easy A minor pentatonic shape, I mean, that guy, it belongs to or it comes from this A minor bar chord. 
And that makes a lot of sense because when we look at this A minor bar chord, we see eh, it actually kind of looks a bit like the scale shape. They share all the same notes. Of course they do. They come from the same thing, A minor chord and A minor pentatonic scale. But here's the magic of this little bit of knowledge that you basically already have. That is that these are the target notes. So now you have a different picture that you can think about when you're soloing, right? So we can see there was the root that I played in my Stop Playing This Lick video. But here's the minor third. That minor third is not like a period at the end of a sentence. It's like a comma or something. It's like, we're not done. There's something coming, right? If I play it. That minor third has a very different character than the root. The root will sound finished. The minor third will sound hmm, a little more interesting. That minor third will have a lot more personality against the chord underneath. We can hear it inside the chord there, right? Instead of that's to the root, to the minor third. It's so easy to see it when you think about the chord shape. Any of these ones will work, right? The fifth is there. The fifth is like a comma at the end of the sentence. It's like we're really not finished saying what we want to say here, right? You can hear it in the chord underneath. As opposed to back to the root. So let's put this in context. I'm going to play a chord. I'm going to play a lick. I'm going to land on the root. And I'm going to play a chord and a lick, and I'm going to land on the third. We can see the difference. Root. That's the fifth, right? Root. like we're not done, right? Third. Root. And the way we target them is just keeping in mind the end result. And the end result, I decide in advance, you know? And I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to go to the fifth. I'm going to get there. And I just got to sort of work my way there by playing the other kinds of classic hammer-ons and pull-offs and bends that we know in this shape. Or even the stop playing this lick. That's pretty cool, right? Actually ending with that fifth makes that overused lick pretty interesting. Now here's where this technique gets even more useful because you might say, okay, if I just kind of muck around this pentatonic shape, you know, I would just find those notes anyway. And honestly, yes, you would. But when you do this with intention and when you learn this system, you can now pull out the chord tones of any chord at any moment in any song, as long as you know what the chords to those songs are. If you're using jam tracks and you're just saying to yourself, oh, this jam track says it's an A minor, and so you're just noodling on A minor for 10 minutes straight, yes, that can sound good because all those notes do belong, so that's all right. But if you are paying attention to the chords and the chord changes as they happen, now you can pull out notes from each and every chord and make those chords and make your lip and make your licks jump out and sound really good. Also, 
you'll find that there will be some notes that you can pull out that are not in the A minor pentatonic. This would seem like a complicated thing to do because like I said, the complicated way would be, no, would be to know that the four chord in A minor is D minor and D minor is D, F, A. And therefore, in order to know to how to play the third of the four chord in A minor, you would have to know that it's an F note and then you would have to know where precisely an F note on the guitar is. That's a lot of very useful knowledge, yes. But there's an easier way, and that is that you picture the chord shape. Right, so here's a D minor, and here's my minor third, right there. We can see that everything else that's in this chord shape is in A minor pentatonic, the easy shape. But not this one. That is very useful. So when we're on A minor, we can land on root, minor third or fifth of that chord. That's the fifth of A minor. Now I'm gonna go to D minor. Minor third of D minor is not in A minor pentatonic. So of course, it's the coolest note to play. It's the coolest note to play because we haven't played it yet. But also, it's right inside the chord. So if you're playing with a jam track and that chord is playing at that moment, of course, that is the sweetest note to play. And you don't even have to do a complicated lick to make it sound good. You can just let it ring out because we haven't heard that note yet. It is the most interesting note. Back to A minor. That's the minor third of A minor, right? D minor. A minor. We can do the same thing for the five chord, right? The five chord in A minor is E minor. And there, right there is the minor third of E minor. I didn't have to calculate that the note is a G. I know it's a G, but you don't have to calculate that. If you just physically know where it is, then you can land it. Same for the root of E minor. There, right? So either of those notes, when the song is on E minor, are good. D minor. fifth of A minor ended on because I didn't want it to sound finished. If I went to the, the root of A minor, it would sound finished. One of the hardest skills I think to learn with soloing is to get to the point when you can actually hear the chord changes. Now, you kind of need to know what those chord changes are in advance. Maybe one day you can get to the point where you can just hear one chord, four chord, five chord, for sure, you can. Um, but for now, if you're not hearing the changes at all, find yourself a very simple jam track that just goes one chord, four chord, one chord, four chord. You know, you can do that in minor, in this case. And then just as you're soloing, listen for those chord changes. You want to hear them. And when you hear that chord change, make sure that you're targeting a chord tone or a scale tone, yeah, chord tone, from that chord that's at that moment. And that will prevent you from sounding like you're just meandering, right? A lot of the times we feel like we're meandering, especially in minor pentatonic. I mentioned several times another video that I made recently called Stop Playing This Lick. And I'm gonna put a link to this video right here for you. And thanks a lot, everyone, for watching. This channel is starting to take off. We've gone from very few views to hundreds of views to thousands of views. And we're hoping to make that into tens of thousands of views soon. So please, like and subscribe and come back because we're gonna make a video every week, hopefully, for the next year, if I can keep it up. I'll do my best, and I really appreciate all your feedback, so we'll see you soon. We'll see you next weekend. Thanks.